All right, so in this video, I want to answer uh, this guy's question again because apparently I didn't answer it um, very thoroughly or very you know specifically. So, uh, hey Chris, thank you so much for making a video response. It was super helpful. Just to give more context, here are a few things I meant by conflicting advice. So when when he meant by conflicting advice, is his original comment that I made a video on was, can you do a video where you show your resume and talk about what are the best practices and what to focus on and just how you go about applying to jobs in general because there's so much conflicting advice out there. Uh, okay, so that's what he, these are the things that he meant by conflicting advice. Number one, there is, I'm gonna zoom this in, there's a debate whether or not you should bother writing a cover letter. Whether you should target few companies and tailor your resume for each posting or uh, have a general resume and mass apply. Online applying versus reaching out to recruiters and the, the thing stuff. Um, so, okay, well, I'll, uh, I, I can see what he means by conflicting advice. So I'll try to answer this from my perspective based on my experience because I, I have applied to a lot of jobs in my life um, and I, I have a general sense of what works and what doesn't based on my my experience so yeah I'll, I'll, I'll go over that so uh, first question is there's a debate on whether or not should you bother writing a cover letter. Is it worth writing a cover letter? Now, uh, it will never hurt. I mean, it's like trying to come up with a good, good example. can't really think of a good example right now. Burgers and fries. That's not a good, it's not a good analogy. Um, so you, you can definitely apply just with your resume. And I have done that many times and I've gotten interviews from it. But in those cases, it was because it was the position was specifically for a rails position and i have a lot of rails experience so i don't necessarily have to bother writing a cover letter because they the 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 company just wanted that position filled and they realized that you know cover letters a lot of people just kind of just write half-baked cover letters anyway. So if their main priority is filling the position with the best candidate, it's, and it seems like the, the candidate, candidate has, a, has, has good experience, they'll give them the, the, the interview, right? The first interview. Now, with that said, it doesn't hurt to write a cover letter. I would write it if it doesn't, you know, if, um, if you have the time to write it, I would probably just write it. Uh, but I do think that it is kind of a myth that you have to write a custom cover letter for every position because, I mean, that, that's incredibly time consuming. I mean, it's just, I, I, I get it from the, the, the hiring company's perspective because they want people to put in an effort while they're applying, but you also have to look at it from, you know, the, the candidate's perspective, if they have to, you know, apply to a hundred thousand jobs, um, especially if you don't have work experience, you're gonna have to put in a lot of applications. So like maybe hundreds or thousands, right? If you have no software development experience, uh, and it's, it's just impractical to ask someone to write a custom cover letter for each application. That's just, it's like slave labor. It doesn't make sense, right? So in that case, what I would do is I would write like a, a generic cover letter and then just just change some work. I mean, most most programming jobs, they, they ask for the, in the job requirements, it's kind of the same thing. Oh, we want a few years of experience. We want experience in this technology, blah, 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 blah. 
um, it's not very like job, most job most job applicant most job postings aren't really unique anyway. So there's no reason. I at least at least I don't think that they should expect you to put in that much effort on the cover letter either. Just have a generic one, and I would probably. I mean, this is what I've done. <laughs> I uh, just have a generic one, just change like the, the company name. And then if the definitely skim over the job requirement, just read it over and change some wording around uh, and then customize it that way. You don't have to write a fresh custom one for each application. It's just impractical. Um, so that's what I would do. Uh, so uh, can you get in the initial interviews without a cover letter? Yes, you can, but it doesn't hurt writing a cover letter and cover letters don't have to be long maybe three to four short paragraphs with each paragraph being maybe like i don't know three sentences maybe two to three sentences it's it's not very long so that's what i would do um and obviously if the like it really depends if you're going on something like indeed and you're just clicking buttons to apply, then oftentimes you don't have to write a cover letter. But if you go on to like, we work remotely, some of these, some of these like the applications, it's an email that you write, right? And you attach your resume. In that case, you do have to, I mean, something like this. You do have to, no, this isn't it, to write the cover letter because what? Well, you're not going to send an empty email, right? It's not going to, I mean, it's, it's a little weird. Uh, hold on, let's see. I can't really find anything. Ah, this. Like a job application like this, hiring for a remote fractional CTO, and it looks like the link doesn't work. But I can see the link, meaning um, mail. it says, at the bottom it says mail to, hold on, am I recording? I hope I'm recording, yeah, I'm recording. It says mail to admin 64 robots. So they clearly, it's an email application. So in those applications, I mean, you wanna write a cover letter because you're not gonna send an empty email just with your resume attached to it. Right, so I think it depends on the application. How come none of these email links are working? It's weird. Um, so yeah, if it's an email application, you definitely write a cover letter, but if not, um, if you can, I would write it. And again, just have a generic one where you can customize a little bit of it so that you can kind of show that you wrote a cover letter because writing a custom one is just for every application when you probably have to apply to a lot it's just it's just not practical um so that's what i would do actually i kind of wonder so i've can you ask chat gpt to write a cover letter i've heard of um people doing that but i've also heard that it's really easy to tell Cover letter, cover letter is written by AI, right? Um, so when people feel like it's written by AI, then then it's probably not a good. It's probably not a good um, good first impression. So let's actually test this out. Actually, I have no idea. Can you write a cover letter? Can Can you write me a cover letter for this job description for a Ruby developer, full stack Ruby developer position. And I'm just gonna copy, I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole job description and see what it does. Uh, sure, I can help you craft a cover letter for a full stack Ruby developer position and open play. Uh, this is all very formal. Uh, okay, let me try to read this. Dear hiring manager, I'm writing to express my enthusiasm for full stack Ruby developer position advertised by OpenPlay with over blah, 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 blah. Specializing in Python and Django. Really? I thought it was asking for Ruby developers. Why is it saying Python? 
Is there a Python here? Yeah, so really should have said Ruby here. Ah, uh, wow, it says specializing in Python and Django and keen interest in transitioning to Ruby. I am excited. My experience aligns with the qualifications you seek. Particularly drawn to open plays. Yeah, this is surprisingly well written. Although, if I write a cover letter on my own, it's probably like a third of this, right? So, I mean, maybe try using AI to write your cover letters for you, right? I've never tried it, um, so I, I really don't know. Um, but no, I mean, it doesn't hurt. So if you can do it, I would do it. Uh, because it, again, it doesn't hurt, it can only help. Uh, now, okay, now it says uh, whether you should target a few companies that and tailor your resume for each posting or have a general resume and mass supply. So I think for resumes, you sh like, I'm guessing you're targeting for, let's say like a specific tech stack, right? Let's say a Ruby position, JavaScript position, right? So in that case, your resume should just, um, it, it should already be targeting those roles. So I think having a, a general resume, like you shouldn't be using a gen, like the general, the general resume should already be like tailored to the, the type of role you're looking for. So I don't think there's reason to have multiple resumes um, unless you don't have previous uh, dev experience, then even then, I don't think it's practical to have have multiple resumes because a resume, because I'm guessing you're targeting for a, for a soft like a dev role, which means you'll probably have a dev resume. Uh, there's no reason to have multiple resumes. Just use one resume. But with that said, uh, the, writing the cover letter, I think you should maybe tailor the cover letter for, like if there's companies that you really want to work at, then definitely tail the cover letter to that, but because maybe it'll up your chances, I don't know. I mean, for most companies, I probably wouldn't, but I remember, okay, so this, I got this email four days ago and 37 Signals is hiring a Rails programmer. So I'm, I'm not looking for a job right now, but if I was, I would, I would I'd be ecstatic to work at 37 Signals, right? Um, I would definitely write a, a, like take this job application seriously and write a, a tailor, write a cover letter um, and, you know, and try to make an impression. Uh, so uh, anyways, th that's my answer. It, it really depends. I, I would, if there are, are a few companies that you really want to work at, then definitely tailor your application to up your chances. But if not, but for the rest, I would just do a generic application and just go for uh, a mass, like just a numbers game like that. Uh, the third question is online applying and reaching out to recruiters. Um, most of the time, especially if it's a third party recruiter uh, who posted the job, as soon as you apply, they'll try to match you for other jobs anyways. So I don't think reaching out to recruiters necessarily helps because most of their job positions are posted anyways. So I don't think re reaching out to recruiters doesn't hurt, but I would just focus on online applying. And not just online applying, but re maybe, maybe not reaching out to recruiters, but reaching out to people you know. Um, so that, like, if you have any friends who are working at a company, ask them to see if they can refer you. I would... I think that's way more effective than than reaching out to to a recruiter because a, a recruiter is like a, a recruiter 
they're like I'm gonna maybe maybe it's gonna offend some recruiters, but I think especially these like third party recruiters, maybe not the internal ones, they don't really care about you. Like they're because they make their money based on placing candidates, right? So they they make their money based on commissions, and they get you know they, the commission is a percentage of the of your salary if you get the offer and you accept the the job offer. So their interest is based on getting candidates who have the highest chance of landing the the job offer and accepting it, so that they can make a commission, they can make money. They're kind of like a car salesman or like a used car salesman uh, where their best interest is not you, like it's not your career, it's not your life. It's more about them making a buck for the most part. I'm not saying all recruiters are like this, but based on my experiences, the vast majority are. Um, so I wouldn't like... I, like, I wouldn't put too much faith in faith on them, especially third-party recruiters. The internal recruiters that work at the company, maybe not. Maybe they have a little bit more clout. Uh, but the third party, the vast majority, especially the third-party ones, eh, I wouldn't. I would just you know, reach out to maybe if you have friends who work at companies that can refer you uh, instead and then focus on online applying instead. So... Hopefully this video was helpful. If you like that, subscribe and like the video. And um, I'm not sure if this guy subscribed. I feel like he should subscribe because I already answered two of his questions because usually subscribers have this like badge on the right of it. Like, okay, hold on. I'm gonna give, give a, try to look for an example. Like this guy, August, Augustin Palamam. He has this publicly subscribed to you. Cool. But this guy, I Bobby, I'm I'm answering your question, so I don't know if you're subscribed or not. I think you should subscribe because it does. I, I'm trying to get to ten thousand here, five thousand first, and then ten thousand afterwards. So every little bit helps. Um, so if you haven't, do do subscribe and like the video. So, anyways, uh, again. Um, that's the video. Hopefully it was helpful and stay tuned for the next video.